So this is 10 ways to close the gap in your classroom. Um, so obviously I've, I've, I've tagged this video um, and thank you to those who voted for a teaching and learning strategy. Of course, why not? Why follow a teaching account without any teaching ideas? Um, before I start, reason what I want, want to share, this is some research, this is just a screenshot from my new book of the 10 schools that I've looked at across the UK and interviewing and meeting the head teachers going to the schools they've identified you can find this on my blog the challenges of head uh, schools across the uk um but what it says here is what do the head teachers find the most challenging they're very comfortable managing pupil mental health the curriculum teaching and learning but they really struggle because they're time poor to access the latest research and do the right things um they've also mentioned here interestingly assessment now when I surveyed teachers, so I've, I've worked with 15,000 teachers on my travels the last couple of years, um, but through Twitter specifically, about 300 responses have essentially said the same things. Thank goodness everyone says, I'm really good at teaching and learning, um, but research-led practice. Um, I only really, apart from doing my master's 15 years ago, I only really got interested in um, academic research I suppose the last 10 years when I started blogging particularly when I would share ideas or worksheets or whatever it would be on social media and I'd either get lots of praise or lots of critique or or some attacks perhaps um, such as the nature of Twitter um, so it, it kind of made me want to be a bit more interested in research and now it's just second nature to me um, so what I want to do is I'm going to share some research based on these 10 ideas I've, I've actually put my whiteboard on my back of my shed door. I'm very pleased with myself. Um, this is a live Twitter video, so you can add comments. So please um, add comments. It's interesting because you're facing this way on my screen. I hope I'm the right way up for you. Um, if you really want this sketch note, these are not public, but you can get the overview of my book, Mark Plan Teach, on my site. This is idea number six in the mark section of mark plan teach um, on my travels teachers marking is driving everybody crazy across the uk so i'm looking at a marking strategy and i've got these 10 ideas so um, maybe pause the video take a look at these in a bit more detail if you really want to send me a message privately through twitter and i'll send you a link and you can download this pdf um, through a four minute summary of the six thousand words in the book you'll find um, mind the gaps also on the site um, so I've got um, a piece of work here. Uh, let me just get it to the right page. Um, okay, so here we go. This is um, my son's maths book. Um, we've got some highlighting here from the teacher on the left. Um, we've got a comment here. NS, try again please. She's then rewritten the equations or at least the multiplications, and then my son has re-corrected the correct answers. Um, and then there's no more further marking. Okay, I only hope to publish my book. So it's out in September, um, I think the 7th of September. Thanks for asking. So these 10 ideas here. Um, so think of that book there, that piece of work. Um, the first strategy is here, show lots of examples. Um, show what a similar piece of work looks like. If I'm a grade B student and I'm currently on a grade E, don't show me a grade A piece of work, show me a grade C next. It's really important to scaffold and show steps. Um, talk it through. Um, it's really important to talk through the work. That's very difficult when you've got 30 pupils. Um, so um, I've been looking at a piece of research recently. Um, if you send me a message through um, Twitter, um, I'll send you a PDF um, through a direct message. Um, really important to talk through um, the work. Um, lots of research to suggest that the most effective conversations are micro 30 seconds. Um, again, if you want this research, I'll point it in your direction. Um, if you go to a previous video, so follow the hashtag TTKitVlog, um, or go into my site and find a script called Pipple, which come from Leverage Leadership, so that's Paul Bambrick Santoyo. Um, praise, probe, identify, plan, lock, and with a bit of practice, you can master that conversation in 30 seconds. So for example, um, I'm talking through this piece of work here with my son. So let me just get uh, an example. We've got an equation wrong here. Okay, so we go praise, probe, identify, plan, lock. Freddie, well done for going through all these pieces of work. 
um, probe some probing questions, the part, second part. Why have we um, put the wrong symbols the wrong way around? Um, how would, so identify how would we make this better? Um, plan, could you do it now please? Or could you do it for homework? Lock it in, Freddie, tell me what you now need to do. A 30 second conversation. It's really important to think it through. When you are also talking through examples on the board, it's really important to think aloud. You offer cognitive support to the students. I always advocate, rather than me turn to the board and work this way, if I say photosynthesis to the class, they can see how to pronounce and move their lips and what it would sound like. So that cognitive support is really important if I don't know how to say the word or I don't know what I'm doing. Um, Number four, make lots of mistakes. As you think aloud and you model the work, whether it's on the desk or on the board, make some deliberate mistakes. Ask the students, oh, what have I done wrong? How can I fix it? Um, students love that. Um, over here, model, show the students um, what they need to do. It's really important. Um, and you might want to show it in a variety of ways, and I'll come back to that one later. Um, Tip number six, when you are modelling, you may want to stagger it. Don't show it all straight away. Um, if you look at Barrett Rosenstein's research, really important to demonstrate in chunks. So introduce a topic, model, explain, think out aloud, make a mistake, move on, let the kids explore, ask hundreds of questions, then clarify any misconceptions, then model the next stage. Um, I will swear by using a visualizer. Um, they used to cost two or three thousand pound about 15, 20 years ago. Now you can get one on Amazon for 30, 40 pound. Totally transformed my classroom practice um, as a, a design technology teacher. Uh, really, really important. Um, thank you, metacognition, some more on the blog. Um, so use a visualizer, um, really important. Get Freddie's work, here it is under the camera, all the kids can see. If I've got Apple TV, I can put my iPad over the top of Freddie's work and show it to the kids all around the class. Um, I'm, I've been talking about this one quite a lot lately, particularly in my CPD sessions. Never assume. It's really simple fix. Just ask the people in front of you, if you're doing a teacher training session, um, or the students. Um, so hands up who can do this, show me. Um, if the students aren't gonna show their hands up, then you might wanna do a private signal, wristbands, colored pages on their desks, all sorts of things. But don't make assumptions. Always ask questions, always regularly check. Um, check what students already know. Number nine, coming back to modeling. Um, let me ask you a question. What do you remember from your time at school? Um, I suspect the majority of the answers will be things outside the classroom rather than in them. So how can we make kids remember what we're teaching? So if we model and imagine, so if I'm teaching photosynthesis, the importance of a plant life cycle, I may want to dress up as a sunflower. I might look like an idiot, but if I can make sure that the kids not only remember, so remember here, memory is a narrative, um, kids need connections. So if they remember me dressed as a sunflower and we do a rap or a poem, um, often people think that's been a bit silly, but actually what it demonstrates is if I model and imagine in very creative ways to provoke memory, and I can talk about memory another time, uh, short-term, long-term and working memory, then there's more, uh, there's more chance that students can retrieve this information from their long-term memory uh, when they're asked a question in class um, and they have the processor in their working memory. So be as imaginative as possible. Um, then the last tip, when you're going through all this, keep the end goal uh, in mind as you're going through that. And that's, I know that's hard with 30 kids in front of you, but when you're planning um, or, or you're actually in the moment looking at an individual piece of work, or you're actually just given a demonstration or an explanation, um, it's really important that if you can use this 10-way process, uh, so I'll put it under this tweet once I've published the video and you can kind of look through them all, and I'll do a screenshot of these 10 tips for you. Um, and again, if you um, send me a PDF, uh, sorry, send me a private direct message, I'll send you a copy of this. Um, I would love to come to Scotland. Um, I'm always up there. Um, so give me a shout um, through Twitter. Thank you for asking. Oh, it would be a pleasure to come home. That's where I was born. Um, right, I'm going to finish. So I hope that you found that really useful. I know it's exam season kicking in from tomorrow for SATs and all sorts of things. Um, so I wish you all the luck in terms of keeping yourself calm and keeping your kids, parents and everyone else calm. I'm going to finish off with, as I always do, with some books. Um, 
So I've actually, um, I've grabbed four myself and I've been sent three through the post. I'm gonna start off with the one that's gonna excite me the most. Um, this is by Bradley Bo uh, Bush and Edward Watson. Um, so I believe one of them's in a drive on Twitter. Um, this book looks brilliant. The Science of Learning, 77 studies that every teacher needs to know. Um, it's got a few endorsements from one or two people I know, but um, you know the themes that are in here, um, we've got memory, aspirations, planning, space in learning, growth mindset, teacher mindset, teenagers, IQ, parents, resilience, all in here, challenging perceptions, but also what the research actually says. Um, and what I like about it is it's just a two page summary of what the study is, what any related research is, and then implications for your classroom, the most important paragraphs. And it's all laid out in that, in each two pages to, per idea. I, I think this is fantastic. So grab yourself a copy. Um, I'm not sure what the cost is. I was kindly posted this, but um, normally I give these away in competitions or on my teacher training to people that can use them, but I'm keeping this one. Um, Next book, um, and Andrew Cowley. Uh, I know Andrew's just published this new book called The Wellbeing Toolkit for staff, okay? Um, and if I just read um, some of the blurb on the back, practical, authentic, whole school model will help leaders to address staff wellbeing. Um, Andrew's a teacher for 25 years. He's now working in, in kind of um, lots of different areas. Um, you can find, um, he's also the co-founder of Healthy Toolkit, so you can follow that on Twitter. I haven't looked through this yet, it's been in forward by Jill Berry, who I know very well, um, and if Jill Berry says great things about the book, then it's gonna be an excellent read. Okay, the next four books, um, I've got um, a podcast that I've been doing for about 18 months now, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm starting to connect with all sorts of interesting people. Harvard University, of all people, contact me, I was very flattered. Um, and I basically had a choice of books or professors and doctors to want to contact and look at the research. So I, I cherry picked four books and um, I've since connected with all the um, researchers or the academics um, all over at Harvard. And I'm going to be podcasting them in the next couple of months. So I'm going to actually read these books um, and get back to you. Now, I'm going to be very busy and I'm going to try and quote these in my own work, my own research. But let me just tell you what the four books are. The first one is The Alliance Way by Tina Owen Moore and it's about a bully free school. Um, if I just give you the, I mean I haven't looked at these at all but um, it's looking at all sorts from staff to students, LB, LGBTQ students, um, lots of real practical stories. Um, if I just give you some headlines from uh, the chapter headings we've got um, Place for all students of power, joy, democratic, restorative discipline, peace, leadership, and so on and so forth. And there's loads of documents in here. So that looks like a great one. This one I'm really fascinated by, um, Race on Campus, Debunking Myths. So it's essentially um, it's a, a book by Julie Park. Um, and it's looking at how perhaps racial dynamics, and I know there's lots of talk in the UK about Oxbridge and lots of research to suggest that if you go to private schools you've got more chance, we know those things. Um, but I'm picking the race um, issues as well and myths and mindsets. So this is particularly about, um, I'm not sure if it's any particular university, but it's looking at race um, in America. And I think um, this would be a really fascinating read. So I'm just gonna open up the chapter. Um, so we've got here, Black students and the cafeteria, what's the big fuss? Um, seg self -segregate, uh, segregating, um, class based affirmative action, um, the problem of mismatch, and all sorts. So, this one looks really fast, uh, really interesting. Race on Campus, Julie Parks. Um, next book, um, Demoralized, very straightforward um, uh, cha uh, book chapter by Doris. Santoro, sorry, book title, Why Teachers Leave the Profession They Love and How Can They Stay? Um, a, a topic very close to my heart. Um, so this is obviously looking at um, the American education system. I, I have a good 15% of my, uh, all my audiences on Twitter and my website following me from America. Um, so it's nice to connect with a lot more people. And what I'm discovering is um, their high stakes model is very similar to 
what we have in the UK. So that's going to be an interesting read. Again, all these are going to feature on my podcast in the next couple of months. Uh, last one is Principled Resistance, How Teachers Can Resolve Ethical Dilemmas. Um, it's been edited there by a couple of um, academics, but um, this is looking at uh, scholars, activists, teachers to explore the concepts of resistance um, as a necessary response to mandates of conflict to quality teaching. So it's about ethical um, leadership in our classrooms to lead change. Um, I've just missed your question. Um, apologies, I'll respond to you shortly. Um, and then the last book, um, Secondary Curriculum Leader Handbook, I'm sure one or two have already seen it being shared out on Twitter. Um, this has been edited by Roy Blatchford, who I know, um, and some of his work has been brilliant, but I believe there are individual chapters from different people. In fact, there are. I've only just got this yesterday, so I haven't looked at it yet. Um, so we've got things on curriculum, um, all sorts of different views from a, a wide range of voices. Um, so that'll be an interesting read. Um, I'll post a list of books. Yes, so under this video, once I've finished, if you give me a few minutes, I'll post each individual link to the books. So that's it from me. Um, I've got my last visit to a school tomorrow for the teaching awards, a voluntary role that I do to go and see some excellent practice and then the difficult ch decision of choosing someone to win an award. Um, later in the week, so I've got two trainee teachers that I'm off to visit in two separate schools um, for their final placement. Um, I know they follow me on Twitter, so they're probably watching this, um, but they're doing really, really well. So I'm looking forward to going and seeing them in the last placement. Um, and what else? So the usual from me, book editing, completing my doctorate, um, visiting some schools, planning all sorts of things. Um, so that's it. It's been a really nice sunny day. I think summer's almost here in London. Um, it's a little bit nippy now, but um, I hope you have a great week. Um, thanks for watching as ever. Um, send me any comments, private messages, whatever you want to do. I'll send the Mark Plan Teach sketch note private through uh, Twitter if you give me a shout. And then shortly I'll post each individual book um, so you can find the links um, under the video. And I uh, apologise for missing last week, but I'll get back into posting one of these videos every Sunday night. Um, thanks for watching and have a nice evening.